homemade pad thai sauce. This is great and easy recipe, and you can show other people how great of a cook you are. Hi, welcome back to Cook Thai with Momo. Today we'll be cooking the sauce for pad thai. Honestly, these days you have one of these packages which has the sauce and the noodle as well. I think it works. I tried it before. But if you want to make you become more badass, then you might want to cook it yourself. These are all the ingredients that I normally use in the pad thai sauce, and you can find it in the description below as well. All right, first up is the dry chilies. I now have these ones. It's fairly large, and my rule of thumb is the bigger the chili, the less spicy it is. Cut both ends of the chili and along the length to expose the seeds. Use your thumb or a spoon to scrape out the seeds. This will make it a lot less spicy. I think by doing this, it's already not spicy. But you can always start with just half of what I use for the chili. When you already remove the seeds. Put in water to soak it for five to ten minutes. This will soften it a bit and it make it easier to manage. Next up is shallot. We need around one, which is 30 grams here. Just in case you want to know how much it is, just peel out the outer layer and roughly cut it. We will blend it eventually, anyways, so don't need to mince it too much. Next up is garlic. We need around three cloves, which is around 12 grams. Remove the base of the garlic, peel it, and roughly cut it up. Same thing. We'll be blending it afterwards. Next up is fish sauce. We will need about three tablespoons. I use the scale here to be precise, and just in case you also have it, or you can use a tablespoon. One tablespoon of liquid is about nine grams, so you need about three tablespoons for 30 grams. Next, we need the palm sugar. This is slightly different than your normal sugar. It adds a little bit more flavor to the dish, so I recommend you get one. If you really don't want to use it, you can also use normal sugar too. But as I said, it's really not as good. Next, we have the tamarind paste. This will provide the sourness to the dish. This is in a paste form, but you can also buy it in a juice form, which I cannot find it in Hong Kong, but I found it in London before. I use about 80 grams of the paste and add one cup of water. We only need about 120 grams or about 13 tablespoons of the juice, but because it is thick, it's much easier to make it a bit more than what we need. Okay, now. You have this smooth and very sticky tamarind paste. We we'll need around 120 grams for this one. Next, you need salt. Be very cautious about salt. I have around this much, and it's about two grams. Now back to our chilies. You can see now that the color of the water is red-ish. The chilies provide red color to the dish, and it also adds a bit of flavor too. So I will recommend you use it, but it's not a total must. One last thing, this is going to be super concentrated because I use the tamarind paste that is super concentrated as well. So I need to add some water to make it easier to manage. I'll add about 50 grams. Next, we're going to blend it. I don't have a blender at home, so I'm using this hand blender. It's good enough, but it will not fully blend the chili. Blend it until you don't see big chunks of chili, and that's it. Now that you're done blending, have it a taste. It's supposed to lead with the sweetness and followed by the sourness, and lastly, a little bit of saltiness to accentuate the overall taste. Hmm, I think this is perfect for me. So now we are done with this, we're going to move into the kitchen and we'll be heating this sauce up a bit. Use non-stick pots and medium heat. Stir it once in a while so that it's heated up evenly. When it boils all over, remove from the heat. 
put in a jar and you can refrigerate it when it's cooled. If you like this video, don't forget to click like and subscribe on the button below. I'll see you next time.